Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're reviewing Orange Blossom from Flower City Fragrance. This is a small indie niche artisan fragrance brand. They have three fragrances out and I'm going to be reviewing Orange Blossom for you today. So if you'd like to know what I think, then keep watching. Showcasing brands that deserve more attention. A lot of times when people are excited about indie niche brands, it's usually the, the same big old names. And there's a lot of other brands out there that deserve a lot of attention and praises. I get comfy on my little stool. One day I'll get a better chair. Flower City Fragrance is a brand that I think deserves a lot of attention. Now, I've only tried this fragrance. They have three. They did very generously send me this bottle as a gift to try. They did not send me this to review, but they did send this to me to check out. And I've been so enraptured with this fragrance. I wanted to share it with you guys. I also like showcasing brands that might not be on people's radars that are well worth the attention. So first things first, this is a vegan and cruelty-free brand. So if that is important to you, then this is awesome. If you are looking to support local indie artisan brands, uh, hello. And I say local in regards to not a large corporate niche brand. Um, I think we all know what corporate, corporate niche are, um, fragrance brands. I think we all know who those so if are. If you're looking to support smaller indie artisan fragrance houses, this is a great one. Now, these bottles come, uh, Orange Blossom specifically, comes in two sizes, 10 mil and 50 mil. The 10 mil is $29 and the 50 mil is $139. I will have a link to their website below. That is not an affiliate link whatsoever. I get absolutely nothing, which is totally, totally good. I'm totally okay with that. I just wanted you guys to check them out if you are interested in checking out a an indie niche fragrance brand. They have two other fragrances, which I'm definitely interested in trying after trying this, which is Vanilla Bourbon and Orchard Vetiver. Now, this fragrance is gorgeous. I'm gonna give you a quick little TLDR review if you are not interested in hearing me talk forever about trees and orchards and Florida <laughs> and, and a lot of different things because I'm going to break down this fragrance because I like to talk about scents, but if you're only interested in how it smells and how it performs in a quick little concise review, then let's get into that review. The notes in this fragrance are Italian lemon, black pepper, orange blossom, sweet orange, you have wood, jasmine, tobacco, patchouli, benzoin, and nutmeg. I would describe this fragrance as a shared scent and I would describe it as more of a fresh, spicy citrus fragrance. The citrus in here kind of smells like every aspect, like the entire life cycle of the citrus rather than just one component, but it does really focus on the orange blossom. So you get beautiful woods that are grounded with the patchouli and the tobacco, which I really like. You guys know I like tobacco, but it doesn't work on my, on my scent, but it's very well blended in this fragrance in a way that it works to ground the woods. I love the idea of the jasmine, uh, works with the orange blossom to add a touch of sweetness, but this isn't a fruity, sweet orange blossom. You get a beautiful orange flavor, but not a bright citrus. So sometimes with certain citrus fragrances, they can smell very aldehydic, very bright, very sparkling, very effervescent, energizing and revitalizing. And those are great, but not everybody wants that. So this is less like the citruses you might find in uh, light blue from Dolce and Gabbana and more in those kind of complex, but very um, minimalistic fragrances from Atelier Cologne. This does not smell identical to any of those fragrances, but to kind of give you an idea of the two. Uh, the brightness of light blue is something that's gorgeous, but the complexity, but still the minimalism the successful ability of houses like Atelier Cologne to capture the beauty and the distinctive nuances of specific citruses in ways that are wearable, artistic, and enjoyable. Um, they do it with orange blossom and orange specifically. So what I like about this is you get the orange blossom front and center start to finish, but I feel like you get the orange. You feel like you're kind of smelling orange juice and you're also kind of taking an orange of rind and like rubbing it all over your body, but in a way that just smells really sexy. There's no brightness to this fragrance from a sparkling acidity, rather it's mimicking it from the beautiful kind of idea of citruses. And I like the idea that this smells as more of a shared orange blossom. Now, normally when I smell orange blossoms, they're more creamy, they're bright and sparkly and there's something about them that smells a little bit more closer to what a women's marketed fragrance would be. And there's nothing wrong with that, 
But for the longest time, you have fragrances like Fleur de Oranger, which I find to be a very fantastic um, shared unisex fragrance because of the addition of cumin. And then you have more of the kind of orange blossom, kind of citrus fragrances like Holy Water from La Via del Profumo, which is a little bit more fresh, spicy, but it's still very sparkly. I love that this has kind of like this juiciness without a sweetness. It's got the beautiful nuances of the flowers and the woods without anything that I feel would make this gimmicky or make it smell cheap. It does have a beautiful complexity to it while also staying true to this idea of being this gorgeous kind of experience of an orchard and really focusing on the aspect of the floral part of the orchard more than any other part, but you still get the beautiful fruits and woods and winds, but warm winds, and we'll get into that. So if you're looking for a more fresh, spicy, more shared type of orange blossom fragrance, I think this would most definitely be well worth checking out. And it does have great performance. It lasts on my skin about six to eight hours. And I would say it has moderate projection and siage. So I have been loving this a lot. I've only had it for about a week now, so I haven't been able to wear it too much, but I have greatly been enjoying it. And since it does have a little bit of tobacco in here, this will blend nicely with tobacco fragrances. I've actually been like layering this with a unique luxuries Beverly Hills exclusive, but that's a different story. But gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. And again, very easy, very wearable without sacrificing any artistic nuances. And we're gonna get into that. So when you're gonna be like, what do you mean artistic nuances? That's my little review. If you wanna sit through a long review, <laughs> let's get into that. To focus on what makes a good perfume. And a lot of people are gonna say wearability, a lot of people think creative artistry, a lot of people think uh, good notes, good presentation, what, what are you looking for? And for me, as I get comfy in my stool again, hi, it depends on what I'm looking for. So when I'm looking at utilitarian fragrances, I do want to have a bit of an idea that this fragrance is going to do what I want it to do. So if I'm wearing a fragrance to go to the store, I want to smell good, I want to smell fresh, and I want it to last on my skin the entire time I'm wearing it. Generally, I'm going to wear my more easier to wear dumb grab scents. But sometimes you don't want to just smell like everybody else. Now, being a Florida girl, growing up in Florida, living in Florida my entire life, I have a basic understanding of how orchards smell. And one thing that I was really excited with this fragrance is when I receive a fragrance to review, I tend to not research the scent too much until after I've smelled it and worn it. And when I smelled this fragrance, in my mind, the fragrance told a story. And I was like, this, this reminds me of something and then when I went to the website to kind of get a list of notes and kind of get compile all my thoughts, the, the perfumer was like, this is what we're trying to tell. And it was almost identical to the story that I was trying to say. So when people create fragrances, I've noticed the common theme when they're making these transportive, beautiful orange blossom or neroli orchard type scents, they focus on beautiful, brisk, cool breezes. And I love those, they're gorgeous. However, if you live in Florida, it's not cold. Oh no, 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 no. It is mostly warm and humid. And most of the time when you're driving through orchards or you live in an area where there's a lot of orange trees, you get a more humid wind, a more warm wind, a more hot wind with the smell of oranges. Now you might think to yourself, that sounds awful. It is not actually, it is quite lovely. It is one of the only things that makes when you're traveling in a car with no AC or you're in an area and you're outside walking and it's really hot and sweaty and you can't deal with sweat because you're one of those people and you get one of those breezes with the beautiful woods and this kind of warm orange uh, fruits and citruses and flowers. It's one of the times that makes that experience worthwhile. And that is what this fragrance smells like. It smells not like you're walking through an orchard on a cool day. It's like you're walking through an orchard on a very warm, humid day. And there's something about that that I think is so intoxicating and so beautiful and is rarely captured 
in fragrance and I think that it's captured so beautifully. Now the other thing that I think is so smartly done and successfully done with this fragrance is a lot of time when orange blossom and orange specifically is used in a more fresh, spicy way, especially when it's leaning more shared, the types of notes that are used in more shared scents, like, you know, like tobaccos and patchoulis. I don't know, I was gonna say tapoulis or whatever. Um, sometimes orange blossom, if it's not balanced correctly, can almost smell like orange drink mix, like tang, tang drink mix. And those don't smell bad on the skin. They can actually smell quite lovely, but it doesn't smell authentic. It smells a little bit nice, but it kind of takes you out of the transport of experience. It smells like a nice perfume and it again works really well on the skin and some people don't like the smell of tang. I actually love the smell of tang. But as a fragrance trying to tell a story, being something descriptive and transportive, and even though I find this to be more of a minimalistic fragrance in regards to it doesn't have a lot of complexity in how it's trying to smell, but there's a lot of complexity that goes into the creation of this fragrance. I like that it doesn't have that kind of tang-like twang and it's more of a fresh spiciness in the background, which kind of makes this, not kind of, genuinely makes this a more authentic experience. It smells like more of a perfume telling a story and less of a fragrance that smells really good on the skin. And I think that that is very successful. So. I like that a lot about this fragrance too. And the first time I sprayed this on my skin, I thought to myself, well, when you spray it from, smell it from the cap, you get a stronger whiff of green patchouli. The patchouli is a little bit green, a little bit more earthy. And you kind of get a little bit of that tangy zestiness. And I was excited because I like that. I like the way those fragrances smell, but it's gotta be on your skin. Again, it's gotta be on your skin and I'm wearing it today. And when it's on your skin, it kind of softens and the woods come out and the nutmeg and the pepper kind of really balance everything and ground everything and rounds everything out. And it takes that fresh spiciness and it makes it slightly softer and less twangy. And that works really well to kind of create this kind of beautiful experience where the twanginess smells more like woods and leaves and sticks and less like orange tang as I kick my thing hi and the reason with that is is a lot of people have experience with how those types of things smell so when they smell something very similar scent memory and just kind of like recollection they're like that's what that is and so it's really nice to smell something on the skin that doesn't even come close to that and I find that to be very successful and sometimes even higher end brands that use some of the best materials don't do that successfully. And so I get really excited when smaller, more artisanal niche brands are able to do that in a way um, that I find to be beautiful, especially when they're not hiding behind like mountains of notes, you know, not hiding behind lots of vanilla, not hiding behind eight different types of white flowers, not hiding behind six different types of woods. They're really kind of focusing on this is the story that we're telling and we're telling it as concise as possible. And you might still have to have a certain amount of notes and a little bit more to it than just like five notes. But at the same time, they're doing it in a way where it's successful. This fragrance smells like a beautiful kind of overripe orange still on the tree and there's still some flowers around it and it's warm and you can smell everything and you're not so much smelling something that smells overpowering, intimidating, or muddy. And what I mean by muddy is sometimes some fragrances, especially that are on the more concentrated, juicy side of citrus rather than the sparkling, effervescent, energizing side, those can get a little bit on to what I mean by muddy is all the notes just kind of muddle together and you can't really pick anything out. And yeah, it works on the skin, but it's not anything special. This is very special on the skin because it might be more of a linear scent, but it does tell a story and it's a beautiful story of kind of a nice warm day in an orchard and you get to smell everything and it's really gorgeous and it's really effortless and it's really sexy. And I also like too how it's not leaning too much on the idea of something sparkly and floral, but kind of something more warm and earthy and floral, 
while still having that juiciness of an orange. And I just think it's really gorgeous. So this has been one that I've really just been loving. If you love orange blossom, if you love citrus fragrances, if your entire wardrobe is filled with nothing but those gorgeous, sparkly, freshy, effervescent scents, and you wanna add something that's a little bit different to your collection, that smells just really beautiful, really sexy, but also very effortless, this is fantastic. And again, I think this will also be a great blending agent with other scents too, woody fragrances, vanilla fragrances, and tobacco fragrances, specifically fresh tobacco fragrances. Again, I've actually really enjoyed this with Beverly Hills exclusive, it smelled really good. I haven't had the opportunity to try the other two fragrances from the house, but they, if they are as beautiful as this one, I have a feeling that they will be spectacular. So a humongous thank you to the brand. I wouldn't have even known to try this fragrance if they hadn't even reached out. And I'm absolutely in love with this fragrance. I've been wearing it pretty much almost every single day since I got it. So that is my review of Orange Blossom from Flower City Fragrance. If you've had the opportunity to try this fragrance or any other fragrances from this house, I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know some other gorgeous citrus and orange blossom fragrances. What are your other favorites? Let me know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.